Well, it looks like we've come to the beginning of the end of this takeover circus that the Glazers have gone ahead to deploy from November last year, right, to June to May, because November one month, December two months, May those are five months and in total seven months of waiting looks like a decision is going to be made over <clears throat> this week and credit bosses are really letting us know about this there is miguel delaney coming out and we revealing a story about that and then there is the independent coming out and obviously revealing to us that a decision is yet to be made this week meaning that it should be made in the working five days of the week they cannot make it on saturday or sunday but they can make it on they can make it on friday latest but if at all it's wednesday thursday friday three days available for them to make that decision and welcome to this channel smash like button comment and share i think this is the news that most of us have been waiting for as we get into the transfer window because you know what it means when you don't have a new owner or an owner that you know that is in charge of the transfer windows having been told that every day we are being linked to players are really adamant to come to Manchester United do you know the reason they don't know who the owner is going to be and players like Diego Dallo Marcus Rashford have not yet got ahead to put pen to paper because of the new situation at the club of Manchester United and they are not sure of who is going to be the real owner for this club of Manchester United so that's what we're having to discuss and Neymar to Manchester United we've gotten the reason as to why he has been linked to Manchester United though the entrage of Neymar contacted Manchester United, but Manchester United gave them an answer that Fabrizio has gone ahead to let us know about. And lastly, Vinicius Jr. is one that has been linked to Manchester United. And I understand that most of you would love to see, would love to see this player at Manchester United. And if I were told that Vinicius Jr. and Neymar, I think we can all say that let Vinny come in through because to me he's the best left wide forward in world football right about now and is the best player for real madrid <clears throat> the previous two seasons that has gonna hate to really be trusted by carlo ancelotti let's continue to subscribe guys want to hit thirteen thousand subscribers and we cannot hit them without you guys so we need you to go ahead and be with the needful and subscribe lower right bottom corner is the place to be smash the black button that has the word subscribe or smashing it hit the notification bell that will enable you get notified every time you upload a video onto this channel now let's do this story coming in from the independent this night they are the first people to come out and really break the story of they're the first people to come out and really break this story of uh this story of uh Manchester united now expecting preferred bidder to be named by end of this week what does that mean people are going to get to know their fate <coughs> by the end of this week that is Sheikh jesim althani and sajim Ratcliffe. after after the Independent coming out and obviously putting out the story, Miguel Delaney, a chief football writer at the Independent, also came out and really confirmed us that Manchester United are now expecting a preferred bidder to be named by the end of this week. It is seen, however, as a milestone of endless milestones. That is it. Now, what are the Glazers all about? <laughs> and why are they doing this? I will understand <coughs> that Champions League football is really going to be so much important into this announcement and I think they want to first wait and see United beating Chelsea and after we beat Chelsea all get a point be rest assured for the Champions League then they tell Sir Jashim Althani that please the team is in the Champions League can you please get us six billion pounds because Sir Jashim Althani might have come out and be told them that how can I offer you six billion pounds when the team is not even in the Champions League yet Champions League means more money so I think <coughs> They just want to go ahead and really let the team play the Champions League. The game is on Thursday. I've gone ahead to do the match preview. You can go and really watch it. United versus Chelsea. Thursday night football back at Old Trafford. And obviously, they would love to find themselves in a position of obviously being Champions League football to make a decision and obviously <coughs> negotiate. Remember, where we are currently, it's all about Sajim Ratcliffe trying to take 50% of the club and obviously keep avram glazer and joel glazer here the big question is 
what is going to happen to the 31% shares that are at the New York Exchange because that's where these glazers sold them. So that leaves us with lots of questions. So because if the glazers get 20%, you know, and Sir Jim Rackley is having 50%, they can find themselves buying off the 31%. Because they have 69%. If Sajim if Sajim Ratcliffe gets like 49%, these glazers can acquire 51% shares. They can go to the New York Stock Exchange and buy those shares and obviously again become majority shareholders. So I think for for Sajim Ratcliffe, he needs to go on and be revised a lot in what he is planning to be as a master plan to go on and really go in bed with the Glazers and obviously become the majority shareholder of Manchester United because he doesn't have money to buy the club 100%. That's why after paying off the first billings of the Glazers, he will acquire close to 50% and then the, 50, the other 50%, 20% will remain in the hands of the Glazers and 30% will remain in the hands of the New York Stock Exchange. So. If the Glazers go ahead and really buy the New York Stock Exchange because the way they value Manchester United is different from how the Glazers really value it, they can even get it at like 700 and they really regain back the shares of Manchester United. So it's still a long story that <clears throat> Sir Jim Ratcliffe needs to look in through. But for Sheikh Jassim Althani, him and his entourage are really willing that the bid that he made of 5.5 billion pounds is really going to really go down well in the pockets of the Glazers and they're going to find themselves really buying the club of Manchester United. So let's wait on Friday because the announcement can't be made on weekend. It should be made Wednesday, today, Thursday, tomorrow and Friday. So we are having three days left but most preferably it's going to be a Thursday after the game of Manchester United and Chelsea all on Friday after knowing that we are going to go ahead and really qualify for the Champions League. And they really know that we are going to qualify for the Champions League because United doesn't lose a Premier League game at Old Trafford. Ever since we lost to Brighton, we've not, we've not seen ourselves really lose a game. So that shows you that it's all working well in the hands of the Glazers and they might be willing to get in the money that they want. With fears that they want to stay, <clears throat> they might want to keep Sir Jim Ratcliffe here. But Sir Jim Ratcliffe also told him that he wants full control of the club. Keeping them around is not a problem, but he wants to be the final decision maker. That's it. So that will tempt the Glazers to say, let's walk out 100% out of the club. Let's agree a deal with Sheikh Jassim Althani and the Qataris and obviously hand the club to Manchester United. What does that mean if at all? A decision is made on by Friday. That means we'll need a full month of June to really see these papers signed, <clears throat> financial documents, and very many other things. You know, taking on the 69% of the glazers is the first phase, but there is also another phase of buying off the shares at the New York Stock Exchange. So it's really going to be a very long process that will be done totally for the next two months june and july but better to see to it that we know the new owner of Manchester united such that he comes in through and obviously makes decisions on who is going to start the club and who is not going to stay especially in the technical department and sit with eric ten hag and present him and present to him the list of players that he really wants if it's Sheikh Yassim althani the better because we know money will exchange hands as Ten Hag will get in the first choice players that he really deserves and going in and hijack some deals, you know. As Real Madrid is trying to go on and do those deals and really talk to Borussia Dortmund about Judy Bellingham, with Sheikh Jassim Althani, we can come in and hijack that deal. We can hijack the deal of Makalista, we can hijack <clears throat> the deal of Victor Oshman, we can hijack the deal of Casido, even Declan Rice if at all we need him because if money is there, and we are having a very good negotiator, though we've not yet tested his skills, though he's new, but he's yet to be tested in the next three months of this transfer window. We can really hijack these deals, provided the money is there for us to spend and obviously 
clear out the dead wood because if Ten Hag can clear out the dead wood, he can really reduce <coughs> the wage bill and then get in some 150 million pounds onto his disposal. That is Eric Ten Hag for you. So let's wait and see how the fate is going to really be told to us the many because this fate is all about who is going to be the new owner of Manchester United. That's it. So is it Sheikh Jassim Althani or Sir Jim Ratcliffe? All that and more into the next videos that are really going to show up because tomorrow we expect <clears throat> the likes of Mike Keegan to come in through and obviously put out a story about that uh, because he is the closest man onto the rain group and is being fed in by sources coming in from that side. Jacobs Ben, Fabrizio Romano, mm, the business, Forbes, those credible, credible outlets as far as this takeover is really concerned because you really know that if at all you're going to get in this news early enough before this week ends then this same story has to be passed on to the credible journalists like Mike Keegan, Jacobs Ben and Fabrizio Romano who have been so close to the takeover of the club of Manchester United. Now let's go to the Neymar story. Yesterday I told you a story that Neymar was being linked to Manchester United that United had gone ahead to really open up talks with Neymar. The story came in like one hour then two hours later it was rubbished by ESPN Mark Odgen and uh, sources coming in from France yet L'Equipe one of the biggest outlets in France had really told us that <coughs> the deal was on. Now Sky Sports cover has told us that Manchester United have been approached by intermediaries about signing Neymar from PSG. <clears throat> they are one of a number of clubs who have been contacted about his potential availability while a deal might be made. While a deal might make sense from a commercial point of view, he's not currently a United target. That is it. So, the fact is it's PSG that came in through and obviously talked to Manchester United and told them that we have Neymar. Are you willing to sign Neymar yet? So, and that's what a credible agent of a player should be doing. That's it. He should be able to look for his client the next job or the next employee. That's it. With Neymar falling out with PSG, he's the most expensive player whom they bought at 200 million pounds from Barcelona to PSG. has been there for some good years. He has failed to achieve his dream of winning the Champions League with PSG. But nevertheless, it keeps on going and going and going and going for the club of Manchester United. So, players have been offered to Manchester United, but he's not a target for Manchester United. Then, Fabrizio Romano also confirmed to us that no negotiation is ongoing between Man United and PSG for Neymar Jr. As of now, <clears throat> nothing concrete, no talks at least with current owner slash board, PSG already discussed Neymar's exit internally looking for solution in the summer. So, I think when you add what Sky Covered told us and uh, Fabrizio Romano told us about Neymar, it's a point of knowing that PSG want to sell Neymar and Neymar wants out of PSG. <laughs> That's it. But on his way out of PSG, <clears throat> they have not yet gotten suitors that are really willing to come in and really take on Neymar because Neymar is on a very huge salary. He earns half a million pound per week, <clears throat> you know. So earning half a million pound a week is really huge for teams like is really huge for teams like Newcastle and very many others. So even PSG want to reduce their wage burden. So how do they reduce their wage burden? It's simple by going all in to really sign off this player. So it's either they really get in players that are really ready to go on and really go on and really do the needful for the club of PSG because these stars they've gone ahead to sign have failed to deliver the best that they deserve as a team of <coughs> PSG. So the deal of Neymar to Manchester United is off but the intermediaries had offered Neymar to Manchester United. Now. Def Central is really so much telling us that Vinicius Jr. is being linked to Manchester United. Manchester United are positioning themselves to sign <coughs> Vinicius Jr. 
in case he leaves Real Madrid, United's aura, Casemiro presidency, and an enticing salary could influence his decision. Guys, do you know why I came up and really accepted to do this story and bring it to you on this channel that Vinicius Jr. is linked to Manchester United and United are positioning themselves to sign Vinicius Jr.? It's because of the words of the agent of Vinicius Jr. Now, Vinicius Jr.'s agent told the marker that in football, there are things you never imagined could happen. I will only say that if one day he leaves Real Madrid, he'll go to the Premier League, it would make sense for him to go elsewhere. And what has been the spark of all this? It's simple. The way he was <coughs> really attacked by the entire stadium through issuing racist remarks to him when they are playing Valencia has found Vinicius Jr. in a position of really feeling like he's not being defended by the La Liga. And Real Madrid have gone ahead and really defended the player. But <clears throat> if at all the La Liga is not really defending the player, then something has to be done. So be him being linked to Manchester United is something great. Others are seeing this as a hypothetical. But if this behavior doesn't stop in the La Liga of calling him a monkey, he will be threatened to leave Real Madrid. I understand he loves Real Madrid, but he will be threatened to leave the club <clears throat> to go to the Premier League. And as I've had his agent, he has informed us that he would love to see him play in the Premier League because in the Premier League, racism is one of those things that is really fought. And if at all you are caught issuing a racist comment or slate to a player, you can really get prisoned, you know, for years and obviously be banned from watching live football on the field of play. So, that is it coming in from Vinicius Jr. Let's wait and see whether any developments are going to come out. But I've seen Fabrizio Romano coming out and really saying he has just signed a new contract, so there is no way he can leave Real Madrid. Even Carlo Ancelotti has gone ahead and really said the player is happy at Real Madrid. But what happens if at all he's attacked again with racist slights? That's it. So, your thoughts on to United take over this week are welcome in the comment section below. Do you think it's really going to happen this week or not? Then, Neymar to United. What are your thoughts about it? As intermediaries have gone ahead to really attack United and tell them that, please, we are having Neymar, but United aren't interested. Then, lastly, Vinicius Jr. to Manchester United. As we've been told that, Ten Hag and his team are really positioning him themselves just to eat that if at all a chance arises they seize on that moment and obviously get in a player known as vinicius jr rock and david remains my name good night all those watching in through i think you've had a blast today four serious videos and exactly in the morning the first video is going to be premiering onto this channel i cover you all in the precious blood of jesus christ i'm out see you later